Brown. Matthew Lumber. Austin Meyerke. Jim Rice. Page Okay. Um, basically, before I read the balance statement, I want to ask if you want to do it. Basically, give you guys kind of an overview of uh, what we have here uh, in, in the plan. Um, on this side, we kind of have a, uh, a planning process and uh, kind of represents a high level process showing the existing conditions um, and some things that we'll get into in a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about the importance of why that's the case here. And on this side, we kind of have a case study of, uh, if you can imagine, an engineer taking this high-level planning down a year in advance, taking this data, and then implementing it practically. Um, this doesn't necessarily, this doesn't necessarily proceed forward from this, it's useless guidance. Uh, and we'll get into that. Hopefully you'll appreciate that uh, later by things that are said. Um, so let me read the problem statement so you have a good idea of what's going on. Um, there are some, there's several areas in our society where infrastructure begins to deteriorate with chronic drainage problems. Uh, this is on the steward avenue and has the world's case that is demonstrated the application of new infrastructure to one such area. So these areas have been, uh, many of these areas have been defined by the stormwater management uh, utility MSD, within MSD, as uh, area issues and as such have uh, associated patch projects uh, ranging from 1 million to, uh, to 14 million in uh, volume. Uh, the design and development is a suitability process intended to provide new infrastructure suggestions to any new area given a few existing design parameters. So the suitability process, as I said, is on this this uh, here. On that poster, you have kind of a design process. Um, so hey, can you just one quick question? Sure. Of course, we've got quick generation of us. We did the deal with a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, with the end goal of reducing uh, capacity in the sewers. Um, so with that, I'll pass it to uh, Amber. Best management practices or BMPs are techniques used to control the stormwater quantity and quality in the most cost-effective manner. Um, especially in urbanized areas where their percent and per rate areas are increasing, um, they've been becoming increasingly important to install. Um, and but it's important to note that if improperly located or maintained, they will fail. Um, some are better at controlling quality, some are better at quantity. Um, the 10 green infrastructure options we look at are rainbow and green barrels, filter strips, dry water spill, wet water spill, permanent pavement, retention pond, urban forestry, and green earth, and wetland and shallow marsh. Um, rain gardens are gardens planted in a shallow depression, um, designed to capture and treat stormwater runoff. Um, they provide an aesthetic appeal. They can be done by individual homeowners. Some of the ponds, they should not be installed on high slopes because the water just will flow off of them. And they should not be installed on dirt zones of trees. Um, the next is rain barrels, and they could, they're installed um, on the downside of the house, and they collect the, the storm water from the rain from people's roofs. Um, there is little required maintenance. They're cheap. Individual owners can install them and maintain them. But um, one harm is that they collect a relatively small amount of water. Um, next is the filter strip, which is here really located um, next to stream banks and we use to treat the sheet flow and to slow down the velocity to reduce the erosion and to filter out pollutants before they enter into streams. Um, the next is the fire slow, which is right here. Um, they're the wet and dry water soil, wet, dry, wet water soil is hot water in them all the time. Um, in general, water soil is an open channel with um, a covered vegetation is designed to infiltrate, promote infiltration. Um, but they do require a lot of maintenance. The next is a uh, permanent pavement, which is seen here. Um, they promote infiltration of runoff and uh, into the ground rather than in the sewers. Um, some of the pros about them is they allow for parking still and they reduce some thermal pollution if you're not going to install asphalt. Um, it would definitely help there. And one of the cons is their maintenance program. Um, with the IP operations, if you swap them, there's problems with that. You have to vacuum them, clean them out, um, and then they're limited to uh, low traffic areas. Urban forestry is an right here. Um, urban forestry actually refers to all the vegetation growing into these. Um, it provides shade and cooling, reduces cooling costs in houses in the summer, um, provides food and shelter for wildlife, and reduces noise and glare. The next is the green roof. It's vegetation that's planted on top of the roof. Um, usually they're on flat roofs, but they've been installed on roofs and slopes. Cincinnati um, City Council is actually going to install a green roof on top of City Hall to use as an educational tool for students coming in for tours. Um, green roofs are estimated that they will last up to twice as long as conventional roofs, but a con is you have to make sure the structural stability of the building can withstand the extra weight of the roof. And finally, we look at the wetland, which I'll march. Um, some of the ponds are the safety hazards. Um, it's limited to high ground water tables that have to have water in it all the time, so we have to constantly have an inflow into it. Um, and the pros are filters out suspended particles and sediments and particulates. Um, it's a great habitat value and you can manage large volumes of stormwater. 